that's where we're leaving it. That's where we're leaving the episode. <laughs> what the crap, dude? <laughs> what a bad spot to leave the show. And I, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Next week needs to come extremely fast because... <laughs> I don't know, we raised a big, huge question mark in this episode, and it really does feel like that's going to be the answer to how things are going to wrap up with the next episode, but still, things are not going well, but <laughs> this is my thoughts on Muvlove Love Alternative Episode 22, so let's jump into it. But yeah, open up the episode, we get a kind of continuation to this whole situation with the Mono Bay and the fact that they're moving their ships into that area in order to secure some sort of escape route. I really did love this opening segment because it's really somebody instilling upon Kozuki just how important this whole thing is. And I think it's always been like this ongoing experiment that Kozuki's been doing, setting up Alternative 4, creating Zero Zero Unit, and creating essentially the last hope for humankind. And it goes to show just how much that win that they got in the last episode really does mean to the army as a whole. This guy, this guy's a captain of the ship and he's like, look... We're going in there. We're going to secure an escape route. We're going to get unit zero zero out of there. And she's like, look, you're you're going to be in danger. It's like, honestly, they're trying to play it off. Like, don't worry. We have these anti laser systems that we have strong arm and everything. We're going to be fine. But it was really them saying we will sacrifice ourselves in order to make sure that this thing you created, which has essentially created our only beacon of hope. Like he says, the the light that was created by this laser was literally their hope. That light was their hope and they cannot lose it. And so they're going to do anything they can in order to secure its route to get out of there. I thought it was a really fantastic scene. Like, despite Kozuki realizing, you know, this is a bad idea. Again, yes, it's technically their only option right now. Still, she's getting pushed into her head. You created something that's going to save everybody. During the episode, we got a couple of scenes of Komaki, which, again, was technically the character that was in the very first episode of the first part. <laughs> The one that saved uh, Uzuki from this one attack of the beta. We got a couple scenes of her where she's literally trying to hold off everything. And it seems like she's technically at the rope. Like she is done. Like she has no, <laughs> no ammunition, nothing. She's gotten to the point where she just has one arm left. So she takes up her blade and starts charging in. Thankfully gets saved, even though it seems like she's super frustrated by that. It's that whole mindset. I'm the only person that survives. I keep seeing my platoon dying over and over again. And I'm the only one that ever seems to make it out. And it was kind of something they established with that first episode, that first invasion. And something that she's experiencing once again is that frustration of like, damn it, again, like I, I keep seeing everybody around me dying. And for some reason, I'm the only one left standing. It was technically the same mindset that we got from Marimo, this uh, survivor's regret. But yeah, from the side of the XG-70, they've decided they're going to leave it behind. They're going to get their escape route going. And the captain at this point establishes everybody leave like they were they were planning on leaving somebody behind for her a kashiwagi and there seems to be like a sort of conflict of interest here and the idea that maya doesn't want to do that like she's like no look in our training you always have a pair of two it almost feels like this kind of inner conflict with maya the idea that she's essentially making up an excuse for why she should have somebody stay behind for the captain and using this whole mindset as an excuse to say no you have to have at least somebody stay behind for you knowing that full well that the captain's kind of screwed if, if they do leave her behind. But the captain's like, no, I don't need that. If you're going to be escorting Shiragane and he has 00 unit, he's not going to be your pair. You need to have another pair, so bring Kashiwagi with you. And yes, technically the captain understands. She knows exactly what Maya's doing here. She doesn't want her to be a sacrifice. Maya has always been about making sure to save everybody. And to that credit, she's really pushing on her like, in a defensive mission, the safety of your target is the baseline of success. And you haven't done that unless you also make sure to keep yourself alive. Self-sacrifice is a noble cause. Don't get me wrong, but you can only do it once. <laughs> It's like you can only do this thing once. So to make sure that when you do it, it has the biggest return. And I might be drawing wrong conclusions here, but it almost feels as if the captain's sort of speaking for herself at the same time, trying to make sure that Maya understands that as well, which I hate because it just makes it feel very, <laughs> it makes it feels like they're flagging the captain even more. But yeah, they, they break off and they leave the captain behind and they start heading towards the bay. And yeah, that's when... Everything starts hitting, this is the beginning point which everything starts hitting the fan. And that they're seeing so, like massive amounts of these betas just popping up out of nowhere. Which makes you start to wonder like, what's even the point of taking all these hives? Because there's just so many. Like, I don't know if, if they don't have the hive, the beta themselves die. Like they don't have a beacon to know where to go to where the hive is at. But it just seems like there's massive, massive amounts of beta here. And it's like, even if you take out the hive... Does it really matter? Are they that, I guess, hive mind focused enough that just having this happen makes them just scatter and they don't know what to do? But something crazy happens. Yes, <laughs> something really, really interesting happens. Out of nowhere, as they're realizing there's a ton of beta, Sumika wakes up. And the moment that Sumika wakes up, all the beta, like, just stop. 
they like they pause like it, th- some of them are like half stepping and they just pause it almost feels like time itself just stopped and additionally xg70 suddenly allows the captain to get into it and so it's like okay time to start the whole autopiloting system and everything and everybody's freaking out trying to figure out why the beta is standing still the entire time i'm yelling keep slicing <laughs> i'm like kill them like 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 kill the beta they're right there just kill them and sure enough Simika falls back asleep and then everything starts going again and the system cuts out the captain again. And I'm going, well, y'all blew it. You had your chance. Y'all blew it. Whatever. <laughs> but yes, it brings up a very interesting question. I I guess the big question mark here is why specifically Sumika waking up suddenly makes them stop. She was awake the entire time she was in XG70. Why is her being over here suddenly make it to where they stop? only thing I can really gather right here is, yes, technically when she woke up, she could have been thinking for them to stop and they listened to the command and they stopped. Because again, we're the mindset here that Sumika or 007 unit is able to communicate to them or read their minds and back and forth. The only difference here than her being an XG-70 is that she's now in the presence of Shirogane. She's right next to him. So does this mean that if they stay together in proximity and again, technically have some sort of same mind here about each other, it's going to somehow manipulate the beta in some way. That's my guess, because that's the, again, that's the only thing that's different here than when she was in XG-70. But yeah, everything starts back up. They continue on their way to the bay, and at some point, Kashiwagi gets damaged, so she decides to go back to the captain. We have a little bit of, again, another conflict with, you know, self-sacrificing and not leaving somebody behind. The whole hope of the future of mankind versus the single person Obviously, Maya wants to save everybody, but at the same time, you're not going to sacrifice, you know, saving this beacon of hope for mankind just for Kashiwagi. Which, yes, technically, she plays in Shirogane. Hey, you understand, right, Shirogane? And he's like, of course, recalling back to this conversation he had with her and this idea that, yeah, if this thing works, her little brothers won't have to actually enlist. So, yes, she of anybody would want this zero zero unit to get to its location. Yeah, Kashiwagi gets back to the captain, preps her unit. At the same time, she again is cut out the system, unable to get it to autopilot. At that point, there's so there's like a what they say, like a corpse size herd coming towards the XG70. So yeah, Kazuki's like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Prep it for explosion, get the heck out of there. Probably not gonna be able to make it out because you're gonna have to fly over to the mainland, which is, we've already established is not gonna happen. At the same time, Shirogane meets up with uh, Hayase's team. They save them and they start heading over to the bay. And yes, they end up running into uh, a massive brigade sized herd. And so, what? <laughs> the episode pretty much stops there. Like, they're in a bad spot. XG70 is in a bad spot. It's, it's zooming in on uh, Sumika's face, because like I said, the only thing I can think of is hopefully she wakes up again. I don't know, but again, really, really bad place to leave this episode, and I'm super mad right now. <laughs> really super mad right now. They've pretty much flagged the captain. They flagged Kashiwagi. Ain't no telling what's going to happen next. Now, it's kind of an interesting thing, though. When they first kind of ran into the brigade size herd over towards the bay... It's, it's this really a troubling aspect where you have essentially everybody's got a, a different set of command. And it's obviously it seems as if Kozuki and her team and the Valkyries, they're giving a different amount of information to Shirogane and his team versus what Hayase's team's getting. So the moment that they do come up here, Kozuki already knows they have this massive size herd over here. And so she immediately tells them to stop, pull back. And they get to that little point of going over the cliff and Shirogane and his team are able to stop. But Hayase's team and everybody, they don't know. They didn't get that information. So they immediately start ch- charging ahead. And they're like, well, why are you guys stopping? <laughs> so it's like that whole struggle of like, why don't these people have the same information? And why don't they have the same command going on? It's obviously because Kozuki and specifically their team with Shirogane is a special team for Unit 00. But it does kind of give you that struggle and the idea that why doesn't everybody else have the same information and in, in making the same command? Anyways. Again, really bad spot to leave it. I need the next next episode like right now. Um, but we'll see. We'll see where this goes from here. Again, I, my prediction is probably going to be that hopefully Sumika wakes up again and it stops everything long enough they can get the heck out of there. But I don't know at this point. It's it is, it really does seem weird that she's able to control them seemingly um, only in the presence of Shirogane. Which again, that might play in that whole theory that I have that Shirogane is a uh, a beta. But anyways, 
I hope you guys enjoyed my video on episode 22 of Mobile Alternative. If you did, make sure to hit that like button down below. Comment. Let me know what you thought of this episode. <laughs> Are you as mad as I am? It was weird, too, that uh, Usuki was really, really, really upset about the captain. And I I don't know what her full attachment is to the captain. Obviously, it seems like she's probably helped her through a lot of this whole situation. I remember, I think we had a scene where she was leaving the captain's room at some point, like she's been confiding in her. You'd kind of assume that she'd be obsessed with somebody like Komaki who actually saved her life. But again, it could just be the fact that she lost everything and then she got brought into this unit and her captain's been basically her her replacement mother for a long time. But anyways, <laughs> getting back into it. If you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button to so get all my content. I do news, reviews, first impressions, top list. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more, we have a Patreon link, a tips link, and a super thanks button down below. I greatly appreciate it, but considers, and you'll take care.